Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, why is it that we don't have some kind of motors driving the landing gear wheels of an aircraft to make sure that they spin up prior to landing? How come that the tires can actually take that enormous amount of stress that is put upon it upon a hard landing, for example, and how much does it cost to change a tire? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is a high quality learning community with thousands of courses in pretty much anything that you can imagine. Now, a course that I think that you guys would really enjoy is Budget Filmmaking with Matty Brown. And if you click this link here below, you get two months of premium Skillshare absolutely for free. So check it out. Right guys, so Today I'm going to be talking about one of the most common questions that I get whenever I talk about aircraft landing, when I show landing or whatever it is, it always comes up. And that is, I always see these huge clouds of smoke coming up when an aircraft lands. That must be, you know, be wearing down the tires really quickly. Why don't you just make sure the tires start spinning um, to make sure that you don't get that cloud of smoke coming off? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Great. So. I'm going to give you a couple of different reasons why we don't have motors fitted to the, uh, the aircraft tires. But first of all, I want to start with talking about the tires in themselves. So aircraft tires are fantastic pieces of technology in itself. Um, they are able to take the pressure that comes from coming in with a 65 ton aircraft landing at 260 kilometers per hour up to 2.1 g's that's 130 tons at a speed of a formula one car and they do not burst okay you've all driven down a highway at some point you've probably seen that you know all along the highway you'll feel you'll see pieces of blown out gears but you very rarely hear about tires exploding on aircraft it does happen but it's very rare and the fact is that the technology that comes in to making an aircraft tire is fascinating there are not too many uh, aircraft tire manufacturers around maybe a handful and the reason for that is because of this technology it takes years and years to perfect it and it has to be certified to be almost foolproof so it takes a special compound of rubber that you would never hear that the uh, the uh, tire manufacturers will ever tell you about but it's special rubber involved uh, they are reinforced with steel nylon and even aluminium threads to make sure that they keep their form um, and you would also notice that while if you're looking at a car tire for example you'll see that the car tire at the structure is kind of divided into different blocks um, you won't see that on an aircraft tire you will just see that they're kind of grooved and the reason for that is that car tires truck tires for example they need to be able to take side forces as you are maneuvering down a road you need to be able to take curves not really the case with the aircraft. The aircraft just need to be able to land and stop on a straight run. But the grooves needs to be there in order to dissipate the water. So we're landing on a wet runway, for example, or even to a certain extent flooded runway. We need to be able to, to try to get rid of or not be subject to uh, aqua planning. Very important. But how are they inflated then? Well. The aircraft tires are inflated to an incredible pressure. The, uh, the normal pressure inside of a 737 uh, tire is about 200 psi. To get that into perspective, that's about twice as much as a truck tire and about six times as much as the pressure that you have inside of your, um, your average car. Um, what else? Yes, 
they're not inflated using pressurized air like you would do when you go to the um, to, to refill your car tire they are inflated using nitrogen and the reason that they use nitrogen is because it's an inert gas that means that it's not you know it doesn't change much when it comes to pressure if the temperature changes or if the pressure suddenly changes it basically doesn't react much and that's very important because if you think about it when we are taxiing out an aircraft it might be up to 35 degrees celsius outside now as we taxi along the we will probably be stopping at given times we'll be slowing down and every time that we use our brakes the energy from our brakes is transferred into the brake discs they become hot and they're very close to the uh, gear so the tires can be heated up and then as we take off retract the gears we come up to our cruising altitude we have a temperature outside of about minus 60 degrees celsius stay there for a few hours temperature inside of the tires will be down to 60 degrees then we come down we land we start braking hard because it's a short runway you will get almost glowing brake discs which means that the tire are now heated up suddenly this is why we have nitrogen inside of them to make sure that these sudden changes in both pressure as we climb and descend and temperature as we climb and descend and then start braking doesn't affect the the overall performance of the tires right cool now to the main question why don't we fit uh, motors some kind of motors either um, well gas driven or driven on electrics to the landing gear well basically there are two different reasons why we would do that okay the first one is actually maneuvering the aircraft when we're on the ground so theoretically there's no need to use jet engines to you know get the aircraft taxiing along on the taxi lines we could have a motor driving the aircraft on the ground and then get us to the holding point start the uh, jet engines up and then take off using the jet engines now this is actually a very good point and this is something that I, I feel quite passionate about myself. Yes, it is very, very wasteful to use jet engines to be taxiing around on the ground. As an example, when we calculate um, a normal flight, on average we use about 200 kilos of fuel for taxi. And that's just to get ourselves out to the runway and get ourselves back to the gate after landing. 200 kilos of fuel, that's two months of you using a normal car just for one aircraft, one 737, to do one flight. That could be done using other means. But is it really smart to use the aircraft's own tires for that, its own motors? Think about it. At the moment, it already exists electrical uh, tugs. We have them here in Girona we have electrically driven tugs. Why don't we invent or use a tug that can be remote controlled from outside or from inside of the cockpit? Use that tug to push us back from the gate and then the pilots will be able to you know, maneuver it, connect it to the nose gear, up to the holding point, press a button which would release the tug. The tug would then be able to using autonomy which we already have the technology for drive back through some kind of side road, back to the gate, and then you be used for the next aircraft. This technology already exists, and it will do all of these things that we just talked about, but without having to re-engineer the aircraft, without having to add any technology onto the aircraft itself. All of the technology would be in the tug, which means that all of the maintenance to the tug, the recharging of the tug, all of that would be done on the ground, where there's not so much stringent rules about it, and there's no risk to the aircraft. So that's the first thing that people are saying. The second thing that people are saying, and this, by the way, is the most common thing, is that why don't, why don't you put motors on the, the wheels so they start spinning before we touch down on the runway? That way you will have much less wear and tear on the, um, no, on the, on the tires. Well, from the onset, that looks like an excellent idea. Yeah, why is that? You know, it would make all the sense in the world to do that. But then you have to start thinking about what could go wrong with that. So, first of all, I'm going to give you three different reasons why this is not a good idea. So, the first thing is the actual fitting of new technology to the existing gear. So, you would have to create, come up with a, a foolproof 
well, not a foolproof, but a very close to foolproof electrical motor that will be running the, uh, the tires. And they need to be strong enough to get the tires up to the speeds that we're talking about. So 260 to 300 kilometers per hour, they need to have spun them up to that. Now, if it's an electrical uh, engine that does this, it has to be connected to batteries. And those batteries, if they are connected to the engine, or to the motor itself, is going to be very close to our fuel tanks, which are in the wings and in the center part of the aircraft. Now, putting batteries, especially large batteries onto aircraft, comes with its own risk. We, know, we saw that in the 787 development, you know, when the 787 was just released, it had some huge problems with batteries. Batteries is an issue. This adding of this is going to also add to the overall weight of the aircraft. And as I've been explaining before on the channel, when you add weight to the aircraft, it's going to burn more fuel. And if that is, you know, a lot of weight for a lot of time, that might actually negate the economical benefit of getting the tires to move in the first place. So that's number one, just adding the technology to the gear. Number two is, as always, getting it certified. So as I was alluding to before, since it comes with potential risks, it would have to be certified by the FAA, by the CAA, by EASA, all of these regular, regulatory bodies would have to come in and make sure that this is safe under any circumstance, right? When they operate, when they don't operate, all of it. That is going to take years and it's going to cost a lot of money, money to do. But, number three, the single biggest reasons why this is very, very hard to do and probably undoable is the safety aspect of it. It's how we are controlling the aircraft during landing. So, when you add new technology to an aircraft, you always need to assume that that technology might fail. Okay, So, if we will be coming in and landing with an aircraft and we had motors that are now spinning up the tires to 260 kilometers per hour. First of all, they need to match exactly the speed of the aircraft. That's a problem because we are landing in windy conditions with headwinds, tailwinds, crosswinds. This, the, the ground speed that we're landing with is going to change very, very quickly. And the tires need to be able to accommodate these speed changes. If they don't, we are going to have potentially more speed on one tire than the other and you'll have controllability issues. That's number one. Number two is what about if one of the motors fails? You now have one motor spinning at 300 kilometers per hour. The other, the other tire is not. When we touch down, there's going to be a huge difference between the two. So you might get the aircraft suddenly wearing to one side, which is not something you want on a 45 meter wide runway. Number three. We are very, very often coming in and landing with what we call a cr crab angle. You would have seen that on YouTube videos when the aircraft comes in and it looks like they have an angle towards the runway. It's very, very similar to trying to, to drive a boat across a river from one point to the other. You're going to need to put an angle towards the stream of the river in order to reach that exact point. And we do the same when we're coming in for the crosswind landing. Now, during the last part of the flare, we tend to put a bit of rudder in to align ourselves with the runway. But if it's a uh, slippery runway or a wet runway, or if the crosswind is too strong, we are actually going to land with a bit of that crab in. So that means that we're landing with an angle towards the runway. That puts some, a lot of pressure on the landing gear, right? But there is torque functionality in the landing gear, which allows us to do this so that we land, get a bit of a jolt, and then we line ourselves with the center line and we continue uh, rolling down the runway. If you would have the aircraft having spinning wheels and we're landing with an, uh, with an angle, you would have a different problem. Now you have something that's actually driving the aircraft off the runway, which is actively pushing the aircraft off the runway. So you would have to be able to, to land without a crab angle or with a very small crab angle in order to be able to do that. So all of these factors combined makes it very, very unlikely that you would be, ever be able to see uh, an aircraft coming in with spinning tires, okay? And on top of that, you have the economical factors here. So changing a tire, tire we have four main tires on the 737. You have two um, nose gear tires. Changing a main tire on the 737 costs about $1,500. Like a new tire is about $1,500. And while that might sound like a lot of money, actually, if you compare it to just a normal tire that you buy for your car, the difference is not that astronomical. 
right? Which would lead you to believe that in the world of aviation, where money flows in huge streams, it's not that big of a deal. And on top of that, a tire would last for about three to 500 cycles. Right, so three to five hundred takeoff and landings. Um, so that's that's quite a lot actually, and we can also re-thread the tire up to four or five times, and that's significantly cheaper than just buying a new tire. So if you take those factors into account, the fact that we are landing and you do get that little um, kind of cloud of blue smoke coming off, it just means that yeah, there's a bit of wear out here on the uh, on the tire. It will be replaced not that big of a deal. Just like you are probably not thinking too much about the cost of the tires of your car. It's there, it does cost money, yes, but it's not huge. Just to give you a little bit of a comparison, if we would have a bird strike into an engine, which happens regularly, and that would actually bend one, just one of the fan blades, to change one fan blade is about $50,000, okay? If you'd have to change an engine on an aircraft, it's about $12 million to do. So these are the normal count of money that, that airlines are used to pay when it comes to maintenance. $1,500 is very little when it comes to that. It is very little even if you compare to the fuel cost of, of, the, uh, of the aircraft. So all of these things combined makes it very unlikely, as in I say, almost surely impossible that you will ever see this technology ever being fitted to an aircraft. Okay? Now guys, the fact that you are sitting here watching this video, asking these kind of questions, makes me believe that you are probably the curious type, the type that want to learn. And this is why I am so happy to have Skillshare as a sponsor of this episode. Now, as I said in the beginning, Skillshare have thousands of high quality video courses in pretty much any subject that you can imagine. But a course that I think that you guys would really enjoy is a Budget Filmmaking with Matty Brown. Right? I get a lot of questions on this channel about what kind of uh, camera I'm using, what kind of lighting and audio I'm using. But what he will be showing you is that it's less about the equipment and more about your technique and your passion about filmmaking. You can do great things just using your iPhone if you know how to do it and if you know how to edit it. And that's what he will show you. So if you use this link here below, you'll get two months of premium Skillshare, absolute for free, so you can check this out. But even if you pay for a whole year, it's still very economical if you compare to other educational courses. It's less than $10 a month, and you can learn anything from filmmaking to how to grow your YouTube channel and even how to prepare for your PPL certificate. So without further ado, go down, check it out, and get back to me. Let me know what your favorite courses were and why. I love to get feedback about my sponsors on the channel. And also, before you go and make sure that you have um, commented on the channel, that you've given me a like if you liked it, and also that you have subscribed and highlighted the notification bell. Because if you don't, when I go in and I do spontaneous live streams, for example, or if I decide to make a special video about something going on in the aviation business, well, you won't know about it. So go down, click, the uh, subscribe, highlight the notification bell. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.